So guys, it looks like 2025 is definitely the year for software as Tesla is not only focused on the robo-taxi network and unsupervised full self-driving by later this year, they are also improving on the standard features that come included when you purchase a brand new car. Not only does this improve on the purchase and the ownership experience, but this incentivizes owners to try out the software, see what it's all about, before spending any of their hard-earned money. With the recent launch of full self-driving in China and Mexico, Tesla is preparing to launch into newer markets, primarily focused on countries within Europe. Beyond regulatory, Tesla's first step into bringing full self-driving to the European market is preparing owners for a new experience and the best way to do that is through the base autopilot features that comes included with every brand new car. Late last year, Tesla rolled out a software update bringing European owners a step closer to FSD by significantly reducing NAG requirements. With that update, enhanced autopilot no longer issues NAGs as long as the driver's hands are detected on the steering wheel and they remain focused on the road. All detection has now been shifted to the interior cameras rather than the torque sensors in the steering wheel. This provides a much better driving experience and reduces the false negative warnings. Additionally, lane changes now initiate immediately when the turn signals are activated, removing the need to tug the steering wheel before the car proceeds. The UI has also been updated to now finally visualize more of its surroundings, displaying a greater number of vehicles, turn signals, brakes, cones, and even unknown objects. All of this is done through the revised back end of Autopilot, bringing forth some newer features from full self-driving, such as the use of the occupancy network. Now, what this ultimately means is that Tesla is trying to stay as competitive as possible, especially in the ADAS market, when level two has technically peaked and there's no longer any additional push to get it any further without hitting the threshold of full self-driving. This means that technically every other manufacturer is on the exact level playing field as Tesla in terms of lane keep assist and distance control. And the only way for Tesla to really stand out at this point with level two system is by improving on the visualizations, the comfort and the safety of the overall system. Now with that, they have just made some small but significant tweaks to the base autopilot, further improving on the overall experience and incentivizing owners to try out the system for those who have always been on the sideline and not sure if it's safe enough. In the latest software update 2025.8.3, Tesla has introduced a redesigned user interface for driver's notification when autopilot is active. Before the latest update, Tesla's UI displayed a rectangular warning message at the bottom of the screen whenever the driver presses on the accelerator pedal. This message was accompanied by an orange warning triangle letting owners know that cruise control will not break. And although the notification was reasonably effective at warning drivers, some found it very distractive as it was placed below the eye level, requiring drivers to take their eyes off of the road. With this update, Tesla has refined the warning messages with a streamlined design using minimal notifications that integrates smoothly within the visualizations. It now uses the same text format as what we have seen in earlier builds of FSD Beta, where the system would indicate its intent before taking any actions. Some examples would be inching forward for visibility, waiting for oncoming traffic, and stopping for pedestrians. This is the exact same font and format that Tesla is now adding to base autopilot. Although this change has not been officially mentioned in Tesla's release notes, a user on X that goes by Cheeky Tesla has shared an image of what it looks like on the screen when the new system is enabled. As well, included in the latest software update, Tesla has made significant improvements to the ride quality and comfort. Available in the latest 2024 Model 3s and soon to other models, Tesla has added a feature called Standard Ride and Handling in Autopilot. Your vehicle will now automatically transition to Standard Ride and Handling when Autopilot is engaged for a much more comfortable drive. This experience is very similar to the current V13 full self-driving stack, allowing owners to have a more comfortable drive without excessive lane changes and maneuvers, all done through enabling the chill mode. The comfort features is now enabled by default 
but you can disable it altogether in the UI by going to the dynamics tab and toggling everything off. So there you have it, short but sweet. This is exactly what we've all been waiting for. Tezza is finally showing some love to base autopilot and hopefully this just means that there will be continuous updates over the next couple of months further improving on the software. Of course, there's gonna be some limitations to that as their main focus here is going to be on unsupervised full self-driving with CyberCab and RoboTaxi expected to launch in Texas and Cali by mid-summer this year. We are gonna see a lot of priorities set towards that software, but that doesn't mean that they don't have the capacity to work on some legacy software like Autopilot and that just means that we are probably going to be seeing a much better experience in the following weeks if they do now see autopilot is what the majority of owners are using. Now, in my personal opinion, the best of all worlds is if Tesla completely removes a base autopilot stack from the system and just replaces it completely with the full self-driving stack, they can ultimately remove some of the features or limit some of the features and call it FSD Lite or beta FSD or any other term that makes it feel as though if you want to get the full on experience, you got to upgrade to full self driving supervised. Ultimately, that would make it the easiest way for engineers to maintain the single stack rather than having to work on both. And it will be the ultimate wins for owners as we get the best version of full self driving, the latest version, although locked behind some paywall, but we'll have the safest and most comfortable version and we can decide on our own if we want to upgrade down the line. In either case, however, no complaints. This is a really big update. We're all really excited. Base Autopilot owners are now going to get a much better experience and hopefully that just means we're gonna be seeing a ton of more as we've said and slowly inch our way into full self-driving light or the full self-driving stack in the next couple of months. Hopefully that's gonna be the case. I will be keeping a close eye on everything that comes up and I would love it if you guys stick around. So make sure you hit that subscribe and that bell notification if you haven't already done so and follow me on X at Hey John E. Over there, you guys will see things you wouldn't see here. I'll be chatting with you guys more freely over there and you guys can DM me anytime and I will respond as quickly as possible. This should be it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is John once again, peace out.